Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah as a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters in the importance of da'wah ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that our attention needs to, we need to give attention to calling uh, non-Muslims to the beautiful faith of Islam. But however, one thing we want to remember while we are calling in this call is that we do need to have knowledge of what we're calling to. That means we have to have some knowledge of Islam, especially to those things which we're inviting people to. And as was mentioned in the hadith of Uh, Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala an in which he was sent to the people of Yemen I believe it was Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him innaka ta'ti qawmin min ahli al-kitab fayakun fayakun awal ma tad'um ilayh shahadatan la ilaha illallah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you're going to travel to a people from Ahl Kitab, the people of uh, the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, because at that time Yemen was predominantly Jews and Christians. And he said that the first thing that you should call them to is the Shahada. The Shahada is what? That's the Kalimat al Tawheed, that's the Kalimat al Ikhlas, that is what uh, allows for someone to enter the fold of Islam. So, that lets us know that that is where our call begins. So for those who are calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling to the da'wah of Allah wa ta'ala, that they need to make sure that that da'wah is to Allah. And that it is in accordance with how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, called people and articulated uh, the da'wah of Ahl sunnah the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it was from the book in the sunnah. And so, with that being the case of Habit of Allah, it's, it's important that we have some knowledge of Tawheed, that we have sincerity in our call, that we don't compromise our call. And, as we mentioned, knowledge. And one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows that He uh, wants good for a person is giving him or her that knowledge or knowledge of Islam. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man yiridallahu bi khayrin yufaqo fideen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him fiqh, fideen. He gives him uh, knowledge of the religion. You know, gives him that knowledge, that fiqh on how to call people to good and how to practice the religion. That's a sign that Allah wants good for a person. So this is what you and I have to concentrate more in our lives so that we can better articulate the message of Islam so we can better call people to the book and the sunnah and that is uh, Islamic knowledge to be able to call people in uh, based upon good based upon those things which please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fiqh vidin. because as we mentioned countless times as the Salaf used to say Talib al-ilm, Talib al-jannah That seeking knowledge is seeking paradise So that's a reminder for you and I That we need to be on this path To seek in paradise so We need to be, you know, really getting Into the book and the sunnah And sitting in those halaqat, in those classes And try to benefit From our students and our mashayikh and, and others So that way we can come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal Man the Prophet ﷺ also said, "Man salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bihi alman sahalallahu lahu bihi tariqan al jannah." That whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. Because why is that? Why? And how how can we understand this? 
that if you, by seeking knowledge, that's going to make it easy for you to get a paradise. What about the guy who just sits in the masjid and prays all day and all night? Who's known for their, his or her ibadah, but they don't have any knowledge. We understand this habit to fillah in accordance with all the nasus. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that those people who fear him the most, al-ulama, are the scholars. Meaning that scholarship is the thing that gets you, helps you if you are practicing. That's what is going to help you uh, get to paradise. And that means you're going to have, you know, the one who is practicing Islamic knowledge, then they have more taqwa because that is the the manifestation of uh, of their, their, their practice or the fact that they're practicing is a part of taqwa. Taqwa is inclusive of that because taqwa, subhanahu, uh, taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal is adhering to His commandments and avoiding His prohibitions. Adhering to His commandments and avoiding His prohibitions. So, by gaining Islamic knowledge, sound Islamic knowledge, and practicing that taqwa, practicing that sound Islamic knowledge, you're, you're, you're practicing taqwa. And you're doing, you're, you're fitting that criterion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who are, who He loves the most, who fear Him the most, is the ulama. So this is how that path, it leads you to paradise, that من سلك طريقا يلتلمسه به علم صح الله له طريقا به طريقا للجنة. That whoever traverses the path of Islamic knowledge, because this is talking about Islamic knowledge, it's not talking about being an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. Those are honorable professions. However, the knowledge that is referred to here, as the scholars mention, is علم النافع. It's 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 truly beneficial knowledge, meaning it's knowledge of Kitab wa Sunnah. Okay, this is what we see if we look in the Tariqat al-Salaf al-Salih. And this is what we look in when we see the whole history in Islam, how the ulama basically understood this. It wasn't that the knowledge of the, the so-called secular, secular sciences, but rather it's knowledge of Kitab wa Sunnah. And so, that Ilm al and implementation of that ilm and makes it easy for the person to get to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm and and bless us to be of those who call to him and implement what we what we call to.